All right, in this video, it's gonna be a really short one. We're just looking at the flowchart visualizations of different loops we can make in C++. Um, most importantly is just for you to be able to see these different pictures, um, but I'll talk through them. And uh, actually, if you click on any of these different pictures, it'll link you to the corresponding video that I've made. Um, and you'll be able to see the worked example and see how it actually works in the, in the source code. So anyways, the first one here, the black one, this is a pretest loop. Uh, Flowchart works for either for loops or while loops. And now if you click on the video and watch it, it's actually we made an investment calculator and we were working towards, say, doubling our money. So our condition here, we'd have an initial investment, but our condition would be as long as uh, our balance is less than uh, double our initial investment, that would be true. So we would go execute the loop body, we would you know add the interest, increment the year, and come back. And as long as it's less than double, um, we're going to keep doing this over and over again, and as soon as we pass this test uh, that it's not less than double anymore, that becomes false, and then we're going to kick out of the loop and continue on with our program uh, where we can maybe see out to the user how much money they have or how many years it took. Okay, so that's that one. That's the pretest. Now in the blue here, we have a post-test loop. Uh, this is for do loops. Um, now this is where we need maybe some input validation where we need to run the body of the loop at least once, you know, before we even test it. Uh, in this video we were looking at making a four digit pin number and if it was uh, not four digits, so in the condition we wrote if it was less than four or greater than four digits, um, that would be true and it would come back here and it would ask the user again to enter it um, until they enter actually one that is exactly four and then it would kick us out. Now that works really well with a do loop, but if it was a, if we were trying to do that here with a while loop or a for loop, um, it would come here and ask us what the, um, you know, how many digits is it, or that would be the condition, is it a four digit thing? And uh, they haven't even inputted it yet because that was part of the loop body, so that, just, that style wouldn't really work. You'd have to put an extra statement up here, but we, that's just an extra line of code we don't need. So anyways, I encourage you to watch this video as well. Okay, so this one is the nested loop. Uh, in the video, we actually used nested for loops, but we could have just as well done nested while loops. Um, I don't know any reason why you would ever want to do nested do loops, but if you do, write it in the comments and uh, we can talk about that. Um, so anyways, this one we were printing an identity matrix or just any sort of matrix, you know, lines, three lines of three digits. So what's going on here is, here I'll circle in a different color, maybe we'll use red. So everything that I'm going to circle here in red is actually the body of the first loop, right, of this condition. So if this condition is true, it's going to be passed down into the screen section. Uh, maybe I'll just write it like that. That's maybe a little cleaner. Okay, there we go. So this is the body of the first loop. Um, now, once this body becomes false, then you'll see this arrow here is going to lead us out and back up to the, the first condition. But as long as the condition in here is true, it's going to go enter the second loop body once and then loop back up here, test the condition again. And in our case, um, well, you can watch the video to see exactly uh, what was happening. But basically, you see here, the first condition, as long as it's true, comes into this body. If it's true, it goes into this body and it gets stuck in this loop, looping over and over again until this condition is true. Once it's false, it gets kicked out back to the first one. And if this condition is still true, like it was in our video, it goes back into this loop again. And uh, then it'll run through all of these uh, these statements here. And also a good thing to note is um, if you define any variables inside of this uh, the second loop here, or any loop, they only exist inside of that loop. So um, and you'll notice in the video we were using uh, an integer, I think it was called j. And uh, J always begins at 1 and ends at 3 in the video. Um, and every time we enter the loop, J gets recreated so it doesn't start at 3 again. Um, whereas if we had an, another, another variable that started uh, or was defined up here somewhere, then that would actually maintain its value and continuously increase or whatever. Um, there's actually one example in this video where we used integer n and it would continuously increase. Even uh, So sometimes it would start at 1, then the next time it comes into the loop it would start at 4. Um, so yeah, please watch this video and then stare at this flowchart for a really long time and it should make sense to you. So okay, there. that's all I have to say about these and uh, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.